We are now going to look at a photograph by Michael Shafitz, which is a photograph of trees, obviously taken in the fall when the trees change color, maybe just at the very beginning of fall because we don't have all of the colors yet. We have some reds, but we still have a lot of greens and some blues. So there is a little bit of haze also in the photograph, which I find very nice. The thing that is important when you have a photograph like this, because the subject itself is sort of undefined, is to make sure that we have a clear focus on what the content or the subject of the photograph is. Sort of focus the eye and to avoid having the eye go around too much in the image, looking for something to see. And here, the thing that uh, disturbed me when I first looked at the image was this very dark tree here on the left side. I assume, you know, obviously properly that the subject of the photograph is full, full colors. And yet one of the most important masses in terms of subject is on the left side, this very dark tree. And it's also the darkest part of the image. So again, the eye goes to the part that has the highest level of contrast. And in that case, it's this area with this little tree here, which is a highlight. And then this bright area at the top, which is also a highlight. So the first thing that I'd like to do is simply remove the tree and see what we have. And uh, if we cut the tree off, we have this. And of course now, on the left side, we are fine, but on the right side, we have a sort of lopsided image because we now have this area that is about one half of the image, but which is really not all that interesting. It doesn't have as much interest as this area here. So what we can do is actually crop the image like this and end it just at the right side, at the bottom right side of this tree here that has a sort of triangular shape. And immediately if we do that, and we're going to leave a little bit of room for the tree to breathe, you know, here, we're going to try to match equally uh, on the right and on the left. And we have a little bit of a trunk here. And I think we have a very nice composition that way. So I'm going to crop it like that. And if we go to the history palette, uh, we can see that we have, oops, I enlarged the image first. If we go to the history palette, we can see that we have the original here and then a crop now. And all of a sudden, to me, this is an image that's a whole lot more about fall than the previous image. But we still have a little bit of a problem with the composition and that is this top of this tree here and then this other tree, but essentially this, this tree here is cut at the top. And it's again a very important part of the image because it marks the end of the image at the top. So to fix that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply go to canvas size and increase the height for the image a little bit. And we're going to make it maybe 700 pixels high and see what we get. Oops, and here we have a blue background, so that doesn't work. I'm going to do it with a white background. Canvas size, 700 pixels high, and now we are right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to clone a little bit of what I think is missing way up there in the image, and that is an ending for this tree here. And the way I'm going to do it is like this. And this is not working because uh, I don't have the right clone tool. I have the pattern stamp and I need the clone tool. So I'm going to undo what I've done and redo it with the proper tool. So now I have the proper tool. And what I'm trying to do here is create an end to this tree. And I have to be very cautious because obviously I don't have much to clone from. But I just want to put an ending so that the top of this tree ends in a blue haze area. And, you know, I don't know exactly where the photograph was taken, but let's just say that it's in the mountain and there is a little bit of a blue haze on that particular day. And we want the tree to end on that blue haze area so that we have a little bit of what I would call breathing room at the top of this tree. And here we're going to create an artificially end of this tree here. And once you have a little bit, then you can clone it at infinitum. And here I'm going to create also another ending to this particular tree. And again, of course, all of that is arbitrary because I really don't know exactly how all of that was. And, you know, it's truly something that can only be done in the camera because the minute you ha are in the studio, you, you don't have, you know, the original subject anymore. And as you can see, it's extremely, extremely tricky to clone properly. But, you know, we are not trying to do art here. We are trying to 
just put an end to this tree so that we have a logical ending to this image. It's very, very important when you work on the edge of the image, and by work I mean work in the viewfinder, work in the field at the time that you're creating the image. It's very important, and here I'm cloning over areas that I find disturbing as well, you know, since I can then I will, just to have a very nice ending at the top of the image, because I think that's really the missing part for this particular, oops, this particular image, is the top is sort of left uh, vacant, so to speak, like we, the photographer was maybe more interested in the full colors and in the shapes and in the full feeling than in the top of the image. And so the top of the image sort of got a little forgotten, so to speak. So here we have, you know, the end of the image, which is now ending the way I think it should be ending, which is with a nice, you know, empty area. So that we have the feeling, and I'm going to put a little bit of color there. And I, you know, in a sense, what I'm doing is almost like painting, you know, in a way, uh, or repainting, you know, perfecting the composition. So that not so much because I'm planning to use this for a final print if it was my work, but because I'm trying to learn how I could make this image work better for me. So let's see now what we have. This is going back to the history palette. The, this is the crop that I had, and I had already. Uh, done something to it, but this is um, now with this is the original image, and I'm gonna blow it up a little bit so that you can see it better. Oops, going too far. This is the original image uh, here, and we can see that the top of the tree wasn't too well s visible. And now this is the image as I did it, and you can see that we can see the end of the tree, and then we have this blue background at the, the back of the image. So that's what I would do to this image. I would really try to end it on a nice way. And uh, all it took really, uh, or all it would take if I was in the field, is simply take a little bit more of the top of the image. You know, back up a little, use a wider lens, and just take a little bit more. And when you use a 35 millimeter camera, and again, I don't know what camera was used here, but let's say that it was a 35 millimeter, you have a very small viewfinder. It's quite difficult to see the edges of the image in the viewfinder uh, because first the image is very small and second depending on the camera that you have it might not show you a hundred percent of the image it might show you 95 percent it might show you 90 percent and in some instances some cameras will show you as little as 80 percent of the photograph and so you literally don't see exactly what you're going to photograph and for that reason it's better to actually shoot a little wide and then crop a little bit in the studio afterwards, then shoot a little tight, and then realize, like I did here, that you don't have quite enough image to fill the frame, to really finish the piece. So again, uh, the before with the full composition, and then the after, which I think is a tighter composition. So, you know, again, to go back to viewing in the camera, I would have done this image as a vertical and not as an horizontal, because I think it works better as a vertical. And then I would have included more of the top, which would have been automatically uh, something that would have happened, because as soon as you tilt the camera, you would see more of the top and more of the bottom. So that's about it for this image. We could also work on the color uh, because I think that it could be punched up a little bit more. We could also add maybe a little bit of black and maybe I'll try this real quick and see what happens if I add just a little bit of black to the image to give it a little bit more punch. Yeah, maybe, you know, maybe just a little bit different things that I can do. Maybe a little bit more punch like this, you know, to, to to separate the trees a little bit better, you know, to sort of bring the whole image more into perspective, you know, to make it more attractive. And, you know, again, that's a matter of test. You could have it very delicate, very soft, or you could have it like I just did. So this is one option, then that's another option with a little bit more punch. But really, um, my main concern here was the composition, working out a composition that's pleasing to the eye and that feels complete. It's always a very important consideration in composition, f creating an image that feels like it's complete, like it's whole, and that it is closed, that nothing is leaking out of the image, nothing is missing, nothing is sticking out. You're not wondering w how far this tree grows. You have the answer, and you're happy within the confine of the image, and you're not wondering what is happening outside of the image.